get started here in a minute. I expect we might have one or two more people join us. Um, any of these things way up. If not, it doesn't matter. We have a, a nice small class. We might even, if we have a super small class, not have a super long class either. So hey. we'll play it by ear. But um, just a little bit of introduction. I think I know most of the people here, but not quite everybody here. So my name is Nathan. I have been coming to the camp since 2007. And I guess that means that um, at some point people started like believing that I must know something about what I was talking about. And so here I am. Um, but I'm definitely not the world's expert by any means on the topic of accent. Um, however, uh, I have had the luxury of getting to learn from a bunch of people who are way smarter and more talented than me, including Sam, who had to come here and make me feel extremely self-conscious, um, because he definitely knows a lot more about this than I do, but, um, welcome everybody, come on in. Uh, so I hope, first of all, that everybody's having a good time, otherwise, everybody having a good time? If you're not, come talk to me, we need to fix that, that's the problem. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's jump right in. What exactly is accent? When I say accent, what am I talking about? Who can find that for us? Ezra, go ahead. A slightly louder or more emphasized note or Excellent. I love your definition. That's an excellent definition. A slightly louder or more emphasized note. Is that how you put it? Excellent. So, in the rudiments, if you would like to check this out, we've got a description of this on the top right portion of page 16. That's, that's kind of where we're going to be looking. Um, we'll talk about each of the different points in there. It doesn't give a huge, extensive, detailed exposition on accent there, but it does cover kind of all the different points I'm going to go to in a little bit more detail here momentarily. Um, but what it says is that when the accent note, and I'm looking at the last line in the paragraph, the top paragraph on the top right side of page 16 there, it says that you enunciate that note a little more emphatically and you make it a little louder than others. So that is exactly what Ezra said. We just give it a little bit more emphasis. Um, the all rudiments actually paper somewhere, and I've completely lost it. it, had a slightly different definition, but it was basically just that, that it's emphasis. It's more or less just the way that you emphasize something. Um, so we can talk about that in terms of the details of the music, and we're going to do that here momentarily, but I have another question before we even get going. If I just say accent in Sacred Heart, do you kind of know what I'm talking about already? To anybody who's just like, I don't know who this class is about. I just thought I'd come because I thought they were going to teach me how to say words with a southern accent. <laughs> we're not people who are good at that, who are American heard. That's also definitely not me. Um, but if you have heard Sacred Heart recordings versus like pretty much any other kind of music recording, and people like singing hymns especially, do they sound the same or do they sound a little different? Probably a little bit different. And to me, that's like one of the single biggest differences between the music that we have versus other kinds of music that are out there in the world. And therefore, I feel like that makes it really important that we talk about and that we learn how and that we focus and we emphasize on accent a little bit because that is one of the things that's really unique and it's important about our music. And if we quit singing with accent, we might still be singing all the same music, but it really wouldn't sound like Sacred Heart anymore. So it's important. That, um, that we keep that in mind. I have one more question about accent also. Is that something that you just do when you're singing Sacred Heart? Or are there other contexts in which this putting some emphasis on one part of something also happens in other aspects of life? Literally just talk. Literally just, just talk. talk you do it. Exactly. And that's actually the other thing about this to me that when I first heard somebody like start talking about this and I'm like, wait, primary, I have to say, what? I was math and the 
third B and this B and everything else. And I was like, that's so confusing. But really, it's actually just a very natural part of the way that we speak all the time. And that when we sing the music, and especially when we sing the words, that we just kind of naturally fall into this kind of cadence where we put some emphasis on some parts, we stress some things more than others. If we don't, then we start to sound a little weird. We'll we demonstrate that here momentarily, um, and I will prove that to you. So that's just a way of saying, really, just right off the get-go, that if you're worried and you're like, oh no, I have to learn my math, and I have to think so hard about this as I'm singing, that's really not at all what this is about. And instead, it's just kind of a natural thing that happens, I think, anyway. But it's important that we kind of focus on it as we uh, sing second part to make it really like sound like second part, because we do it a lot. All right, we'll get to, to more of that here momentarily. All right. So first of all, to start out with, we have some notes that are more accented than others. We have some notes that get more emphasis than others. That's the definition that we've got to start out with. Uh, for defining what accent is, so where do those things go? So we can start with each of our different modes of time. Anybody learn modes of time in the room this class is yet today? Excellent, all right, so you guys can help me out for sure. We have common time right here, and I have some handy cheap things in, in case you need any help at all. Uh, we have a primary accent in every single measure of music in the whole entire book. The primary accent in 2-2-2-4, two, 4-4, two, two, four, 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 it falls on which beat of the measure? The first beat, always on the first beat. Very, very, very simple. So in fact, if I go to 2-4, which really just only has one accent note, we've got on this particular piece of music, just two notes in each, um, two beats in each measure, and the primary accent falls on that first beat. Okay, excellent. So we can complicate this just a little bit more, because in 2-2, two, 2-4, two, two, uh, excuse me, especially in 4-4, four, four, we get a secondary accent. We've got a emphatic, uh, full accent at the very beginning of the measure on the first beat. Where does our secondary accent go on 4-4? Four, four? The third beat. You know, I find that really confusing because to me it seems like that's that is like some odd number that doesn't fit anywhere. I just like to think about it on the second half. So if you think about like as you start the second half of the measure, if, you, if you're if you like really good on like the 1, 2, 3, 4 kind of thing, that's great that it's on the third beat. But if we're thinking um, a little more casually, like I did, and it would just be on the second half of the measure, actually. Okay, so one more question about this. If we have a primary accent and a secondary accent, what's the difference between those two things? To my ears, it's pretty subtle. Actually, it's, pre it's a pretty subtle thing, but the old rudiments actually defined this in a way that I think actually makes a lot of sense. They didn't call it primary and secondary, they actually call it a full accent and a half accent. So if you put a full accent on that first beat, you put a half accent on that third beat, then you're going to be accenting it perfectly. All right, one more very important thing, maybe the most important and the easiest to overlook about accent. So we've got our primary accent on which beats in 4-4? Four, four. Number one, always number one, excellent. We've got our secondary accent where on 4-4? Four, four. Number three, brilliant. Okay, so what about this note right here on B2? How much accent? No accent at all. Exactly. All right, and also, for instance, this note that's on number four. No accent. So really the most important thing to me, I think, as we're practicing, as we're getting this sound in our head, is that the accented notes are important, but just as important, maybe even more important, because I don't know if you've noticed this, but Sacred Harp is already kind of loud. Has anybody noticed this at all? Yeah. A little bit? Yeah. Um, you like take your friends and, and you have to warn them, right, at first, don't you? Because it's kind of loud. Yeah, so if we were trying to like actually sing like twice as loud as we're already singing on this accented notes, that would probably not be for the best. So instead, how do we really effectively create accent? Just keep singing loud on those accented notes, but take it down like a, a good bit on those unaccented notes. So that's really, really important. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this. I think this is a very complicated piece of music. Can everybody see this? right up here. Uh, if you can't see it, then come move and sit where you can't see it. Let's go ahead and try this. And by the way, for the purposes of this class, we're going to over-accent. We're going to overdo it. You're not going to worry about it. You'll read the rudiments and it says if you accent too much, then it will start to sound choppy. That is true, but for this class, we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to do it. We're going we're gonna to kill it on this accent. So don't worry about it. All right, here we go. Uh, so I know that 
most of you already do, so that's a good thing. Okay. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. I do want to do a psychology experiment sometime where I just like start doing this and then just repeat it and just like see literally how many times I repeat it before like people start to rebel. Like how long no, would it be like 10 times? <laughs> would it be like 18 times yeah. before everybody like stops singing and then just okay. Um, I guess that's for another day. All right, one more question about accent. What part of your body is actually accent? It's kind of a strange question, right? Your diaphragm, right? I right, think. That's, that's, I was thinking like, I was thinking even like sim simpler than that, just like your voice. Oh yeah, I guess that's not really the body part, is it? But um, yeah, your lungs, your diaphragm, it's the sound, right, that's coming out of your mouth. What part is not accent? This is where it gets a little bit tricky. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because if you're leading time over here, yeah, and this is where we don't want accent because what happens if we're trying to be like, Right? Yeah. No, that's not how we do Sacred Heart, by the way. Has anybody taken their leading, leading class yet? Definitely do a leading class maker. We've got great people to learn from. You do not want to be like Nicole Kidman. No. <laughs> you want to be like the expertly trained Romanian experts. They were so good. I wonder what happens. <laughs> They're out there somewhere, like right now in Romania, there's like a whole bunch of people who are just wonderful Sacred Heart <laughs> songwriters. Yeah, isn't that strange? Actually, it's a strange thought. Okay. Um, that's neither of them. If you haven't seen Cold Mountain, um, it's a bad joke anyway, but okay. Awesome. All right, so I think we're good on common time. So two, four, 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 uh, two, two, all those modes of time accent in pretty much the exact same way. And we'll talk actually a little, a little bit more about, about some of the subtle differences. Triple time, how do we accent in triple time? So first of all, where's the primary accent in triple time? Always on beat one, doesn't matter what mode of time, it is always going to be on beat one, that's true in three, two, and three, four. Where does the secondary accent go in triple time? Third. Also on the third beat, exactly, it's just like four, four, only now, instead of having another unaccented beat between <coughs> the end of the measure and start of the next measure. We don't have that. And so if you think about it, it's actually really kind of an interesting thing because we get this uh, one, and we let off on two, and then we come back on three, and then strum on one again. And it's almost like we're building this kind of rhythm in a way, like it's kind of swelling as you come into the next measure, as you go measure by measure, as, as you accent like that. So it's a little bit different, it's kind of fun. Um, Let's just go ahead and, and give it a shot here. All right, so, la, uh, wait. La, uh, so, so, la, uh, so, la, uh, la, so, so, la, uh, la, so, la, uh, la, so, la, uh, so, so, la, uh, la, so, la, uh, la, so, Um, but we see a lot, a lot of measures 
that are um, more like that first measure. If you turn back to the bottom top, get a slightly better example. Okay, how many song, how many notes in this particular song are on B two? Is there actually any? I don't think there are. No. Not a whole song. Amazing. Okay, or you could like turn to turn the page to forty seven on plus. This is three or yeah, three two. How many notes on B two? That one's much more set. So that's five. a typical thing. Are there five? <laughs> Anyway, not that many <laughs> is, is the answer to that question. If you go through the book, you'll see that that's the case. Why is that the case? Well, if we were to look at the words, and 45 on top is probably as good an example as, as the rest of these, then how would we accent that if we were just to say that line in the poetry? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Yes? If we did it backwards, would that be fun, actually? Uh, amazing, grace how sweet the sound. <laughs> right, so it works, that's why, and it just fits naturally. It's a way that the music just naturally fits with the text, and that's really what um, the accent is all about. So um, that, to me, makes it much easier to accent on words. Anybody else had that experience, by the way? That sometimes, like, the class will just, like, not really be sounding that the accent really isn't happening that well, and then all of a sudden you get to the words, and then you kind of lock in a little bit better. Yeah. So what does that mean to me? That means that we really actually need to try, especially while we're singing the notes, to try to accent <coughs> that um, particularly well. OK. I think we are good there. I do actually want to turn to just a exception to the rule here. And this might be kind of fun. So look on page 347. So most of the songs in the book are like 45 on the top that are in the triple time where there will hardly be any beats that are on, or hardly any notes on beat two. But on this particular song, there's actually a lot of measures that just have three beats in a row, three notes in a row, one on each beat. So would it sound different if we actually accented this in a way that reflected the difference between those notes? It might. So let's actually give it a shot. So if you sing lead, by the way, just sing whatever you want from wherever you're sitting. But if you want to, you can sing lead, and that's what I'll be singing if you want to do that. All right, so let's give it a shot. Uh, 347. Oh, OK. Sorry, I missed that. We got the problem students back there. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> about emphasis on particular, I'm just kidding. No. So let's do a better job though. So now, we're, now we know we're going to be doing that. So let's actually make it happen. And again, once again, in this class, we're not worried about if we're over accenting. We're just going to do it. We're, we're going to hear it. Okay, so here we go. Uh,
Compound time. Anybody a fan of compound time, by the way? Oh, oh me too. I love compound time. And part of what makes compound time so great is the accent. And at the same time, part of when like compound time doesn't go as great as it should, it's because we're not accenting. So that's important to keep in mind. Okay, so y'all are experts by now. Compound time. Compounding together, basically the two and the four, or two and the three, it's two sets of three per measure. So where does our primary accent go in either six four or six eight? One. Always on beat one. You have to no matter what the of time. Where does the secondary accent go? Three. Count way over there to that. Uh, what is it? The fourth beat, or as I would think about it myself, because I'm not that in depth at counting and simple math. The second half of the measure. So as soon as you get to the second half of the measure is where you're putting in that secondary accent. Okay, so therefore, how much accent does this note get? None at all. Wow, okay, what about this morning? No, it's going to be totally neglected. It's very sad, but it's all for the best. Okay, so let's try this. Remember, we're getting accent by primary emphasis here, good, strong, solid emphasis there. A secondary accent, so kind of a moderate emphasis right here, and no emphasis at all on these other notes. So let's go ahead and try this one. Ah, so so we me so 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 me me so so sounds good. Sounds good. Let's do a little experiment. Actually, this might be fun. What if we just think about these notes? We don't even say them at all. You can mouth them if you want. I don't want to hear any sound, so we're just only going to sing the accented beats, and we're just going to think about the unaccented beats. Okay? Just, just try this. If we do this, ah, so, so, fa, so, 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 fa, so, so. Interesting. I'm not sure what that proves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's do a song that's actually in the book that's in Compound Time. Anybody got a favorite Compound Time song? What's your favorite? 67. 67, yeah, okay. It sounds like a 6 4 to me. Excellent. You want to come lead it for us? That would be great. And I will actually, okay, just point out something really quickly, by the way. And that is that a lot of compound time songs are kind of like the triple time that we looked at, where they're written in such a way that there aren't very many notes that are on the unaccented beats. And that would be more like some of the measures that are a little bit later in the song, but you'll see there's also some measures in this song that have all six notes. So it'll be fun to make sure that we actually can hear a difference within those. Okay, awesome. Do you hear me? Uh, okay. <clears throat> Lava, lava.
think it just naturally works that way. So that's why it's kind of important to think about it when you're doing the little by the notes. Okay, excellent. Should we do a, a trickier song that's in, in compound time? So I love compound time. It's really fun. It almost gets this kind of like swingy kind of rhythm when you get that accent going well. Um, that to me is very important. And I feel like there are a few songs that it just, if you don't do that, then it just does not sound, sound good. Do you want major or minor? Major. Minor. minor. <laughs> I think the minors have it. Okay, so let's look at 360. A great song for having like a note on every beat, mm -hmm. which are the hardest ones to accent because again, you gotta think about which one of these notes actually gets that accent and which of them don't. And it's also a tricky song to accent because these little eight notes kind of just right off. So um, let's see if we can do a, a justice to this song. Um, all right, let's just let's just look at the notes real quick. La la la. Tunes, the the eighth notes almost were swung, mm -hmm. 
and or there was just more more of a look to it, more of a natural kind of like we were experiencing with 360, where there's of course the act, good accenting, but it seems like like there's a different kind of if you don't lean towards that swinging, you get a little more Freeman row body. Oh right, yeah. And what like I I just imagine like base few differences where people are, it feels just feels very square versus right. just kind of like natural and lilted, mm -hmm. even though it's not a compound time song. Do Definitely. you have any wisdom with that? Because That's, I don't, yeah, I can definitely say without hesitation that the robot is actually Bremen, not Bremen. Excuse me. Yeah. Bremen. That's the only thing I can say. <laughs> securely about that. No, but I think that's actually a really good question because a lot of the time, and when you do this in recordings, but to like people saying too, sometimes they notice that I feel like the accent kind of almost carries over to the rhythm a little bit. And this is something that has intrigued me, in fact. And so I've asked several people about this. And so far as anybody knows, no one's ever been specifically taught to do that. So that's like not something that anybody ever learned at a singing school. And if you don't know what we're talking about, it's kind of like the rhythm can kind of get a little bit swingy. It's like you dun 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 almost kind of thing where you're changing the duration of the notes, which is not the way that we talk about or define or describe accent. But I think it's just something that's so naturally kind of a part of the way that it feels to do it with your voice that it just sort of um, just bubbles up naturally. And so my sense on that is that since it's something that nobody ever taught, that it's probably better that you know that we don't teach it per se, but we just think about how that that maybe is, is um, a natural result of a proper accent, perhaps. Is that a good non-committal uh, answer to your question? So you're saying don't teach it, but do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that if you're trying, if you're trying to swing the rhythms, then you're probably going to move. Of course, yeah. Whereas if you're just accenting really naturally, really well, then you might find yourself actually also even subconsciously changing the rhythm just a little bit. All right. So that's my answer to that question. That's an advanced. I like, I like the second one. That's a very advanced level accenting question. So I really appreciate you raising that. We have other questions actually about accent too. See any other hands or thoughts or? Please. I'm sorry, I have a word. Well, we were looking at 56 on the bottom, uh -huh. and there's a, that page we were looking at in the rudiments to mention something about syncopation, oh, yeah. uh -huh. where the accent gets displaced. Right. But what I, I'm confused with that because um, right. then all of a sudden we're accenting like, oh, thou, or they bid, or right. things like that. But right. it, musically, outside of the text, it seems like that is the thing that the rudiments. But yeah, so let me actually, because I was, so this is a perfect kind of segue into just a couple of other kind of more like advanced accent talks. I have to tell you all about life. I should, I, I, we'll just count it as bragging on you, but for that, the adult, you know, we never get past like, you know, just like these. <laughs> so now it's, it's, this, I love this class because I, mean, I still have like 15 minutes I can tell you now the advanced level accent. So let's cover that actually right now because there are some exceptions to the way that we typically accent. And actually, let's look at, so 56 on the bottom is an example of that. 97 is maybe a little easier example to look at of something that we call a syncopation. And if you've sung this song, you probably know what I'm talking about uh, already because, where is it here? Okay. Right, so right in the middle, yeah, exactly. And it's on the top and the bottom braces, but it's right on that word Hosanna. We'll shout and sing Hosanna. So typically we accent the primary accent on which note in the measure? Always the first, right? But what happens in that particular moment? We get this weird little thing where it's kind of displaced. And so we call that a syncopation. And what tends to happen is that we end up actually accenting that second um, beat in that Hosanna, which just sort of feels more natural the way that um, the sound of that works. There are a number of songs that have similar kinds of things, and if you wanted to, you could actually like, go through the whole book and kind of like highlight stuff like this. But the wonderful thing about accent is that it's really just meant to be a way of naturally making the music sound the way it just wants to sound. That to me, it's like, if you point this out to me, I'm like, oh yeah, that is a little bit different. But I would always sing it the way 
that we should sing in any way with that kind of displaced accent there. So it's not something that I would stress about. Um, I've actually seen, have you ever seen anybody leave this song and they get to that and they're like, is no, that no, no, no. Yeah, they almost like, yeah, it's like throw in an extra beat there or an extra movement or something, which I think is totally natural as well too, just because of the way that that um, accent is displaced there. And I think 56 on the bottom has kind of some similar issues going on with that as well too. Uh, the rudiments tell us, by the way, that the more important thing is actually the words. And that if the words are like different from the music, then just go with the words. And I think that that's probably the best way uh, around it. We have some really kind of fun examples, and I think this actually, let's turn to 73 on the top. And we could look at any number of examples of this as well. Have you ever been singing in a song and you thought, wow, I could almost make this into three four? instead of 4-4. Four, four. So if we wanted to, we could probably sing. Actually, this would be very easy. So, la, so, la, fa, so, so, fa, fa, la, so, so, la, so, la, fa, so, so, fa, fa, la, so. Am I doing it right? That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it would actually, it would totally work. And in fact, if you look at the words, on some of these songs, they might almost even more naturally line up that way than the way they are. Um, we could try. You want to try it? Let's do it just for fun. All right. Uh, so, uh, all right, but we'll check the time with it because I want to blow your mind. All right, here we go. Uh, so, so. Right, perfect. Okay, brilliant. What happens when you get down to two, four? One, one. 
we really just have that one primary accent and it comes on the first half of each one of those um, bars. Now, the second thing about this, and this is for your modes of time class, but we will just briefly touch on this here. There's also another difference between 2, 4, and 4, 4, isn't there? What is the difference between 2, 4, and 4, 4 that I'm thinking about? Could you beat time? You could beat time, potentially, if you did, if you were one of those folks who beats like this, you could. I would never do it on this song, but that is a good point. Okay. Um, there's one other thing that you do, also, that is the tempo. Yeah, exactly. All right. So 2, 4 goes a little bit faster than 4, 4. It's a little bit confusing because maybe a recorded note is actually a little bit. So it's very confusing. We know how it feels. So. All right, so let's go ahead and sing this song and see what happens when we get from the 4-4 four, four to the 2-4 because of the way that we're accenting. So let's make sure we're doing this really good accent as we go along. <clears throat> Beyond like what we've talked about already about like 
that it makes it sound like Sacred Heart. Sure. Say what? I like this. Oh, excellent. Okay. I don't think I don't think we think about it enough, but it is so true. And I can tell you this from personal experience because when I started singing, I should not admit this. Some of you, I hope. Yeah, a couple of you heard me, I guess, when I was supposed to sing. I did not sing with accent. I did not understand what it was. We actually had uh, a woman from Alabama who kept like trying to, she was like, oh, you should sing with accent. And we're like, sure, sounds great. No idea what you're you talking about. And I could not sing for even one day at an all day singing because I would just wreck my voice because I was trying to basically sing every single note at the same volume. And accent is awesome because it lets you just rest like half the song. Right? Or, uh, you know, compound time, you're like resting for two thirds of the song. It's, it's a great thing. So, that is, I think, a part of it. Absolutely. Other things that occur to you is like, why? Yes. Please, do you have that? Oh, oh, you look like you were about to. I feel like it helps kind of keep time as well. I think so, definitely. I definitely think so. Have you been in a class that was together? Where it was just like, you just left, like, we were so together. A huge part of that is accent because it gives you those little, it's almost like the click track, right? You close your eyes and you know what the tempo is. You know where you're at. Down beat, the up beat, you know where it's at. Totally. <laughs> yep. And if you're, if everybody just like sinks onto that, it's just like, it just keeps everybody in perfect time together. Absolutely. Any other thoughts about what we um, Sort of similar. Um, sometimes when you're first learning, this is really hard. Uh, like all this is really hard. If you can pick like one note to pay attention to, it, you just pay attention to the first note of every measure because then it will have the strongest accents. It's kind of the note that matters the most, and that makes it a lot easier to kind of just keep keep that where you are. To keep that where you are. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. Keep yourself going. I'm, my goodness. I mean, even still, I. I'm pretty sure I'm only singing the accent notes in West Alabama sometimes. That's where I'm Which I love to do, but then if you haven't sung with those folks out there, you definitely need to. Okay. Excellent thoughts. Any other thoughts about, about uh, why we accent? I, I love all this. I think that's all very true. I think it you know, kind of wraps the words up with the, uh, the music, um, as we were mentioning as well earlier. One just last kind of like part of thought on this as well too is don't stress about it because I, I remember being like oh no I have to laugh you know I already had to learn all these bizarre shapes and things and now it's just like one more thing that you have to do Tom how often do you actually think about where you're accenting when you're singing I never you don't sit there and you're like okay one three one three as long as I say the hand come down that's the, that's the hardest accent okay so you just know it right so really what it is, is the way that we naturally sing and the way that keeps us naturally just like singing perfectly together. And that's the more important thing. Focus on that. Don't worry about like trying to do math in your head or something like that. And if you just kind of sing with people who have, have it down that way, it's going to. Okay, I'll shut up. We'll sing this song. We'll get out of here. How about it? Okay, 240. Um, anybody want to leave this, by the way? We have a two, 240. Never done it. Oh, please, oh, yes. I love it. Yes. Right. I really struggle with these weird six months. Excellent, all right. Is it done? I think you're up using the No. Rats, I was really hoping on this. But I'm very Oh, man, I should have I should cut you just with power for some. Okay. <clears throat>
everybody for coming. I really appreciate it. Go see if you get some more snaps. We're going to get one more chance. Got it. You're welcome. Those snaps. Good luck. Okay.